Hold on, hold on, change my view. So Paul, you look there like, what do you look like? You look like an artist or something. You look That's like right. you have like an artist studio, like a really swanky loft and like- Like we interrupted your creative right For real, like he yeah. just learned I mean, that, women with on. incense and barefootness and yeah. I don't know, Maxwell tunes or Bilal tunes, something like that. Always, always ah. a little Oakley. Y'all know about that life, Oakley. It's okay. Yeah. No, I it's don't a very, I don't know. It's a you don't know about Oakley? I'm going to I'm I'm put you on. Oakley. Oh, I know about Oakley. I'm a Long Island. 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 I have to know. This is what I got my, uh, when you move out. Uh, uh, Vanderbilt uh, School of. Uh, Flexing? It's just a light flex. A, li a, a light, little light. Light a little light, little light work, old shirt. Ah. You, know. <laughs> you could be a creative ambient stem. A little light. Little I, light Harvard in the South. Yo, the whole aesthetic <laughs> is just tripping me out tonight. You just, you I look know. like there's like vanilla candles and shit. Just listen. In the back. Ha, rich vanilla. It's like, oh, <laughs> we. Word. word. With lavender <laughs> petals. You can't, you can't Netflix, you can't Netflix and chill unless you're prepared. That's all I'm Wait, saying. Wait, no. It's not Netflix and chill. Let's get into it's that. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. And dick. That's Welcome back. <laughs> to the <laughs> Live After Show, where we're just going to get right into the debauchery, like, right into, right into yeah, the debauchery. Right in. um, awesome. Janine Truitt here, and my, my lovely co-host will just, you know, quickly tell you who they are and, and what they do before we get into it. The artist, you you going first? Nah, okay. nah, you can, you can go first. Ladies <laughs> first. I'm all right. Oh, over right, here. all right. He's so polite. Um, I'm a Morgan, known on social media as The Buzz on HR. Hello, everybody. Glad to be back for episode three of the Apple Show. Look at us being consistent. Yo, we are so consistent. I'm not going to lie. I'm on with the consistency. Yes, <laughs> I'm on consistency. And, and I saw her, I was like, oh, it's in my phone. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> Can, let's, let's talk about how I've, I've literally been talking all day long. Like, my inner introvert has had enough. So I'm going to be on a whole nother level because I'm just like punch drunk <laughs> from the sound of my own voice <laughs> at this point. <laughs> so this after show is about to be lit because I'm just, oh, I'm just talking. It. It's going to be all off the cuff. <laughs> I'm with it, man. I'm with it. Um, oh, okay. So I'm Dr. Paul McNeil. Uh, on Twitter, I'm Usable Set Guy. I'm the founder of NB Usable Security focus on the intersection of marketing and cybersecurity and usable cybersecurity. Smart doctor, so smart. no glasses, Oakley doc. hat. Listen, yeah. I can put the glasses back on, but Lady. sometimes you gotta change it up, you know? Just get it, just get on it. Like, you gotta, gotta change it up. Major vibes tonight, major vibes. <laughs> like. So, we I should, mean. We're, we, we're editing, we're editing. I'm, I'm in film mode. <laughs> Clearly, right. So, like, you know. fire stick and D. I don't know this. Okay. I don't. I don't know how this. How does? How's that? It just, it rhymes though. I mean, yeah, what else are you? What hard. else are you gonna say? It it just rhymes. It you yeah. know, it just rhymes. I have to tell you, I just really couldn't function after that whole bit. That that was ah. that was because <laughs> like well, you, you know, know I like. <laughs> Just like Sarah, I already was coming in at a deficit for attention. I was already coming in there, right, after the day I've had. And then you hit me in the head, and then I look down, and I see, like, fire stick and D. And then here she comes with the I did plant. it. Then the damn the eggplant. I said, this is just it. And I was like, going to be go. the end of the show. <laughs> this is it right here. This is going to be the end of This will be the show that I just want. <laughs> Because my people have no damn behavior. We failed you. Yeah, no we sort of we're supporting we you. you. We're no, supporting you. No. We're out here in the comments. No, de no decorum in the comment None. section. Like, right. uh, I was None. like, good lord. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, so, oh, guys, man. are you cocooners or not? Nah? Most definitely. Uh, most definitely. Yeah. Which absolutely. one are you? Yeah, socialized cocooner, oh. armored cocooner, wandering. So wow. I can't, I'm not a wanderer. I I gotta keep my head on the swivel. You know, I was I was just raised to be aware of my, my surroundings. So even now I can't um like if I go walk in the park 
I might have one ear pod in, but I got to hear. You know, I got to know what's what's going on around me, what's coming up beside me, what's going. On. I got to be aware of my surroundings. So I don't know if I could ever be so lost in, in what I'm listening to or whatever that I would, you know, just forget where I am now. And I've said this on Twitter, so it's not a secret. I have put in earphones in places so people won't talk to me. I have done that on multiple occasions. And then I just ear, ear hustle on other people's conversations and I hear all kinds of stuff and it's great. But I've done that. Um, but I don't know that I would, but I don't actually turn them on. I'm just doing other stuff and I don't want nobody to engage me in no um, basic social conversation. I'm not trying to talk to you. So let me just keep these earphones in. So you think I'm listening to something. So you won't talk to me. But I think I'm more of a socialized cocooner. I could be an armored cocooner, though. And particularly, my husband is in law enforcement. So we already got the, the floodlight cameras and the doorbell cam. And so we are we already on the web. I'm a little Yeah, I could be one, but uh, I got all right. She's like, it's a light flex to armored, but I'm gonna just stick in this socialized. It's levels, yeah, it's levels to it. Like, I'm not fully, I'm not fully armored, but yeah, I'm armoring. Is that a word? Yes, you're getting armored up. I'm, I'm getting armored up. That's that's how that is. But I'm most definitely socialized. Absolutely socialized. And I'm what okay is with it that. with with HR professionals and marrying law enforcement? Is that like a a real trend, or is that just a unique situation um, here? I think that that is a unique situation. I think so. Here, actually, I feel okay. like I mean I could be wrong. I feel like more HR people marry HR people. HR people. That's what right? I yeah. Because don't nobody understand shit that we do otherwise. <laughs> No. So you got, you know, I I come home, I try to tell my husband stories. He'd be like, he it just just give cliff notes, please. He, you know, the <laughs> complexities. Like if I need to, you know, really get dig into the complexities, I gotta call my friends. I gotta call my mom's a retired human resources professional. I'll call my mom and be like, guess what happened? But no, he wants highlights. He's not getting down in the guts of, of what's going on in these issues at all. Mm-hmm. But it does so. work very nicely with their jobs. Like mm-hmm. they almost become like a built-in therapist, which is mm-hmm. good and bad, I think, yeah. for what they do. But yeah, 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 I would agree. But no, I don't. I don't know that it's a trend um, or a trend that will continue. Amen. So no. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I just I'm you know I'm new to this world. I'm the outsider, so I pull up and I'm like, oh, is this this is what we do? We, <laughs> this is how we get down, you know? We're open at work, but strapped up and armored up at home. Armored okay. up at home. Well, hey, you know. <laughs> I mean, that's I don't necessarily think that that's a bad thing. Like the you know the streets is crazy, so I certainly understand. You people talk like you from this. New York. I, I was Not born far. and raised. Yeah, <laughs> born and raised in the brick. So you know that has never left me. I, my husband clowns me because I locked my car in the garage. Like we live in probably there's no there's no like real significant crime here. It's it like really is. It is. It is. It is pleasant. She <laughs> Janine has seen my house. She knows Same. it's there ain't oh, nothing it? going on. Like yeah. But um. But yeah. Every day I get out of my car and I'm like, oh, I'm in the garage let me lock it up like I can't you know I can't not I can't not do it it's just it's ingrained in me I don't think that that's going anywhere and I'm good with that because you're not gonna catch me flip that's true I mean I think I I was only in New York for a few years but I have some of those same like tendencies and habits because my parents lived in New York for so long before they had me and um so you know I don't leave, like, if I take anyone out and they, like, leave their purse in the car, uh, we're going to put this under a coat. Let's put this in the trunk real quick before we leave. And, like, all kind of, like, we not, now. Nah, you got everything out? You all right? They're not about to bust my window for your little $10 change. I'm good. that's right. Let me, tell you how, <laughs> let me tell you how bad I am. When I go shopping, this is, this is my dad taught me this when I was little. When I go shopping, like, you know, you go shopping and then you put the bags in the car and then you keep shopping. Mm-hmm. I got to move my car. I can't leave my car with the bags there. Somebody might have seen me. So I got now I got to repark somewhere else. You know how many times I've lost my car doing that? <laughs> <'Cause> they... <laughs> 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 no, no, that's true. 
had to move the car three times because I had to put bags in the car. So yeah, I still do it. I still do it to this day. I can't just put bags in the car and then go back shopping because again, I'm not. You're not gonna catch me slipping. Mm -mm, Now, now, I'm contextual because we moved so much growing up. So it it's a switch for me now. Right, like I'm all happy, friendly, and chill and stuff, and then like the plane hits LaGuardia or JFK, and I'm just oh, like, yeah. yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Or um, like there are certain things I might not stress as much about down here, but uh, Nashville's starting to grow for real, and they starting to try to have real crime. So I've been like, oh, this is how we live in. <laughs> I got Nashville, you. Thrashville. Thrashville. Well, I mean, you know what I'm they started. They started. <laughs> There may or may not be a correlation between the fact that, like, I've known just about, mm, I don't know, five or more people that have moved from New York to Nashville. Don't know if they're bringing the crime with them. I can't they are. say, can't call it. Mm-mm. They are. They are. I'm <laughs> sure. No, but here's the thing, because I grew up, New so we, we moved, by, and so when we moved south, I've been in the south since I was, like, 10 or 11, so I've been down here. I just didn't lose a northern accent. But I've been down here forever. And I remember when we first moved south, we like go to Walmart. People go in the store for 45 minutes, 30 an hour, and leave their car running, keys in it, door unlocked, and it'd be like a bin. And I just was like, I wish I, I was a criminal right now. I would only need like one buddy and we would win every day. That's every day. Wild. Crazy. Yeah, mm-hmm. I can't. So I, mean, I I get mystified at some of the stuff that I see. Like, wow, like you really, you just gonna leave your whole like really whole life. Hand, yeah, you gonna leave your whole really expensive handbag on the front seat of your car like that, and in broad daylight with this like we like people really live at that level. I I wow. can't that I can't fathom it. Look, Janine looks completely perplexed. I, like, I, yeah, I, yeah. No. <laughs> As the resident New Yorker here, I just, you know, and, and, and I live in a, you know, what is considered a, a decent neighborhood. I mean, I'm in Long Island. I'm on the North Shore, which, you know, is seen as super affluent. But even up here, yeah, that car door be locked. Like, they lock. one night, I guess, so I usually, as I come in my house, I usually, like, you know, double hit it so that I hear it beep. Because that's Mm -hmm. the only way I feel comfortable knowing that it's been locked. So one night I must have come in and like, you know, hit it, but not really hit it. And so I got up the next day. My husband had been driving the car. And so like I called him like, hey, yo, you drive my car, all my shit's out my my damn glove compartment. Like, you think you want to put the stuff back? Were you looking for a tissue, a napkin? Like what? He's like, yeah, it wasn't me. I'm like, what? He's like, yeah, I didn't do that. I'm like, oh, okay. So then I came to find out that apparently there's like some people that just kind of traverse through the neighborhood, just like, you know, messing with the locks on cars just to see who's who's and who they can rummage through. That's some New York stuff right there. Right. (laughs) It wasn't, but like, again, it's not as though I live in like South Jamaica or Flatbush, or anything okay. like that. car would have been but, gone. You know, so. <laughs> you came out, that should have been I wonder. Been gone. <laughs> had that conversation. Yeah, so it's like, you know, of course then I'm like, well, Tim, he was in my car. Who was it? Are they watching the house? Like, you know, it's this yeah. whole uncomfortableness and that I think that's like the whole purpose of the cocooning thing. It's like, when in the moments when those things happen, it's like our perception, the way it's lined up and set up is like, everything's going wrong in society like it wasn't just one instance the whole throw the whole society away throw it all away you know throw like everybody's away. trying and to I'm pick pocket my house. right so we start to take these aggressive measures which isolate us further and further and further i mean for me yeah. i'm definitely i'm a socialized cocooner at this point um wandering cocooning from my observation is the younger generation like I almost took out somebody's child the other day going to pick up my son from preschool I mean she just had the earbuds in and she just walks across doesn't look both ways not like nothing was going on in her world but whatever was in those earbuds and I was like on the phone with my best friend on bluetooth I'm like 
oh my God, I nearly killed somebody's child today. Because she just wandered literally yeah. into the middle of the street. I'm like, little girl, you think you want to like look both ways before you cross? So I think it's de there's definitely something about that wandering cocooning and perhaps a younger demographic. I'm not certain that that equates to us um, because they're, they're happy to just throw in anything like la 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 and just be on their mm -hmm. way. I aspire to armored cocooning. I think I'll get there, particularly. Life yeah. A after whatever happens like from now until 2020 here in the U S politically and otherwise civil unrest and otherwise, I think it'll be a necessity. So I aspire to fortify Listen, the home. And I stay home. ready to head to the mountains. I'm just saying. I be out we here. We have a code yeah. word though. Sure. Like, where are we going? I mean, Rambo. we could talk off after the show. I got y'all. I got a couple of. I got a couple of people in a couple of places. The after after show. <laughs> right. 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 With, with, of, with a couple of caves. With, with ganja and and all sorts of <laughs> and edibles and shit. My stash of edibles. As long as y'all don't send a thread of voice me voice messages again, I thought I was going to. Oh. <laughs> I was doing I was like, oh, and I was no. like, I was like, man, I could take this, but I'm not. I'm trying to do this other stuff. So I was like, oh, I can hold it and lock it. Oh, we at there. I can how technology it. is enabling humanity. Do you see? Like, I mean, it, it is. just is. Yeah, no, I'm really socially is. cocooning. I'm reaching but, out. But that's kind of it. But what I found interesting in in that regard and what you were saying was talking about people going through all that, but then still feeling lonely. Like, I feel far more connected than I do isolated as a result of it. And I don't know if that's just generational differences, but for us, like, I, I tell this to, to my cousin and I are nine months apart. And so, you know, we were, we were like twins and inseparable growing, growing up. And then she moved to South Jersey. We were letters, you know, like actual letters. Our kids are very close in age, super close. They FaceTime, they text. And, you know, they can talk on the phone, talk to each other whenever they want to. They play the video games together. It's like they don't miss a beat. Mm -hmm. Whereas we ex had to have stamps, you know, to be able to communicate mm -hmm. with one another. Awesome. I would have killed for that kind of technology yeah. to be able to connect with people and, and keep up with, with my friends who moved away and all of that kind of stuff. So it's interesting to me that that's the way that I look at it. It's like, oh, it allows me to continue to stay connected to people. And yet you find so much loneliness that contributes to depression and suicide and, you know, all of these horrible outcomes at a time where we're more connected than ever. On the one hand, I get it. And on the other hand, it's hard for me to like fully make sense of why, of why those two things are happening. Yeah. I, I think it's a, it's a, what do you call it? FOMO, like fair missing out type of thing in part. So mm. for me, I was homeschooled for a really long time from like fifth grade until I left home for college. So for me, the entire social wave of the internet, MySpace and forums and stuff like that, that was literally how I first like had any kind of social interaction because I found this out today and it sounds horrible. Where we were living in Texas, I knew it was a small town. And I looked up the population today for just a random conversation. It had like a little over 12,000 people, right? I'm, the only, I'm like one of like maybe who knows how many homeschool kids because everyone goes to the same high school. So I don't have a lot. So for me, technology was my way of branching out. And it's like, as it's evolved and more people have gotten on it, what you have is like, you have the beautiful people, whether it's, they look beautiful, they're doing beautiful things, things of that nature. So while you're more connected to these everyday people, you're also more connected to all the other people who are your age that are living in a way that you probably won't ever live. So now you feel like I'm not really living up to it. I'm not doing this. I should have more friends. I'm alone because I can actively see Sarah has 10,000 friends or followers and we quit followers or friends. I think a lot of young people do definitely. Mm -hmm. um, it becomes, these are our friends. And so I don't have that many friends. I'm alone. It's just me and my little 200. Whereas before, if you could have 200, I remember when like I first got on Facebook and I was hyped to have like 50 people. I was like, oh, this is cool. I could like talk to people and go about my life. This is great. You know? So 
I think I think it's it, it comes from like what people are putting out there as well as being able to connect. Because when you were connecting via letter, you weren't able to see what anything outside of like, you know, what you put in the letter for real. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think I do think it comes down to the whole meaningful connection piece. I think the vast majority of people who are using social media aren't necessarily understanding that one you can make meaningful connections and then and they're they're mostly and two they're mostly caught up in the height which is if i have x amount of followers that actually equates to my not only my social connection but actual friends until they realize none of those people are their friends in fact they're they're barely even acquaintances right Mm -hmm. so now that leaves you especially as a young person who's trying to figure themselves out I can see how that would make you feel lonely, right? Because they're not even real connections. Like I can totally see a situation in which somebody's like talking to you online and then you get to school the next day and it's like, yeah, we only talk online. Like, I don't even know you. Like, let's not even act like we know each other. That's kind of crazy, you know? That's how you start with Netflix and chill, by the way. Is that really how that starts? Really? In, in the in my grad school days, in the olden days, long, long ago. Long, long, long ago, because you're so long, old. In it, long, like, long yeah, ago. So far, far away. In my youth. In your in youth, my youth. Which you're still when in. I used to live a, when I used to live a different in. life. Right. Huh? No, see, but I've grown it mentally, so I'm like older mentally. When I was younger mentally, there's a difference. When I was a grown boy. Um, <laughs> Lord Jesus Christ. I you can't. would start off the, the evening and you would get in the DMs or whatnot and you might be at the event and you don't necessarily interact at the event There's so that you can kind of spread a net out. And anyway, well, or later. Let's, let's. I'm so fascinated by this. I am later. too. Because I'm... I really, you know, I, I really think, and this is this is really largely the reason why I've had a difficult time subscribing to the moniker of millennial. Not because there's not something immensely cool about it, but there is something so um, analog about me, even though I'm very forward thinking, there's something so, so analog about me that I, some of these things are just lost on me, right? Like I am the person that, if you connect with me on Facebook, for instance, right? And like, I've known you, we've been friends in a previous portion of my life. And like, you just sit in my Facebook and never say anything to me. That shit is my pet peeve. I will like, get rid of you. No, literally, we'll get rid of you. Because to me, it's like, are you here to, are you here for a peep show? Like, what is it? Like, yeah, I agree. we're friends. I, we used to go to the candy shop to get whatever it was, like, at least give me the courtesy of, hey, Janine, how's life? Doesn't have to be long, but just, hey, Janine, here's life. For other people, for younger folks, it's just like, whatever. It's just another number. I add it to the roster. It's cool. But from, again, like, there's just something in me, and I believe it has to do with the era I came up in, where mm-hmm. meaningful connection is at the basis of everything so even like with social media it's like yeah i got on there i networked i put myself out there as a persona as a business but eventually the people that i started to connect with it was like okay well we've been doing this a while on twitter and on the blog well let's hop on a call Mm -hmm. and then you hop on a call and then the call becomes well okay maybe i might open you up to my facebook you know, or maybe now I might let you into my LinkedIn, but I feel like everybody in my age range functions like that. It's like the, in other words, the relationship can't just live online. Yeah. Otherwise it just doesn't make sense for us. Am I right, Sarah? No, I agree totally and completely. And I would add that becoming your friend (laughs) on Facebook for me is the biggest deal of all the social media. Like, I'll let, you know, I'll connect with you on Twitter. I'll connect with you on Instagram. I'll connect with you on LinkedIn. It's something about Facebook that I just consider to be a little bit more personal. So when I friend you on Facebook, it's legit. Like, it's, it's mm-hmm. legit. And to your point, yeah, the, the, I expect some level 
some greater level of interaction at that point because I feel like from a social media perspective I've allowed you in to like inner sanctum yeah. um yeah so yeah yeah no I I completely agree and I absolutely prune my friends list on Facebook pretty consistently for that like I am like we haven't talked in forever all right well I'm gonna unfriend mm-hmm. and just keep rolling yeah Paul is I, um, pa- Paul's like, like okay <laughs> old ladies yeah, all right old old ladies. <laughs> no 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 here's, here's no but here's the thing here's the thing here's the thing I'm in a weird space I think because um I straddle the fence kind of with with you all and the younger millennials in that um, I was raised by, my parents had me later in life. So I was raised like, I think the older uh, older generation, mm-hmm. even though I was surrounded by a, a younger millennial crowd, right? So I value personal connections and meeting up and, and things of that nature as well, but I can understand when it doesn't happen. So it was like I can I can switch it, but I was laughing because today I um I was trying to kind of pull some friends uh, for this product that I'm putting out, uh, the side projects that I'm trying to put out, and I was like, man, I should scroll through my Facebook friends list and see who fits this particular profile, so I can get some quick questions from people I went to college with. So I'm scrolling. I can't tell you how many people I have on Facebook. I haven't looked through my Facebook friends in years. So I'm like scrolling through and I'm like, oh man, after this person, like five years. Oh my goodness. You you. Look you at would this. Unfriended. You that you know? And so yeah, you would have unfriended me a lot. So I'm laughing because I was sitting here and I was like, there was one friend who we were super, super close. And I never even thought like, oh, we're friends on Facebook. And I ended up messaging her. And then we ended up having a phone conversation and catching up. It was like our first convo in like years. Um, and it was like nothing had, you know, no time had passed. But it was, it's funny that you say like you prune your list. Right? I never check it. I can't, I have like people who have added me or waiting to be added. I don't even look at like, I just, I don't really mess with the friend side of Facebook anymore. At this point, I get on Facebook. Um, I use Facebook as a tool, I think, more so than anything now. And I feel like the people that I'm really cool with, I just message you however I message you, whether it's Instagram, text, phone, whatever the case is. And and that's how I judge my recent messages based on who's really cool with me. So I don't, for me, it doesn't matter if we're friends on Facebook or whatever. If I've been talking to you consistently for the last like couple months or, you know, weeks, then I'd be like, okay, this is somebody that I, you know, that's cool right now. I used to go so far as to take stock and it was in my phone and who I was messaging and be like, okay, if these people hit me up and I get on, these are cool. Anybody that's not right now, uh, we, we go a little funny face. But I don't know. So it's just, it's interesting this, to see that. And this is why you're part of the, the trifecta, right? Because yeah. you get this maturity beyond your years. We don't know how old you are. I don't, I don't think I've ever known how old you were. I don't know. Oh, oh maybe we should, uh, maybe I, feel, I should make that a reveal one day. I feel like you should reveal that. Yeah, because I, oh. I don't have a sense. I, I'll say this much. I feel like... I feel like you're older than my younger brother, who is 31, going on 32. Okay. But I know you're definitely younger than me, for sure. Okay. Am I good? What do you think, Sarah? I'm not guessing. (laughs) No, I'm not guessing because you already, because we talked about this i know the answer so i can't, oh, I can't guess oh, yeah see, we talked I about this i can't guess I can tell people. this is why i just don't tell people stuff because i don't even remember it's all good i am 29 i just turned 29 in November. stop so wait you're younger than my younger brother I'm younger than the brother yeah oh yeah. my god the maturity I, I have so much respect for the maturity now I, yeah. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Well, but now you understand why I try to get my bills paid because I'm in transition still. <laughs> Bruh. <laughs> See, it makes more you're, sense you're now, like, doesn't it? Like, if you, I, I think if you were already in the 30 range, somebody might be willing to, to, to tackle you. So the running joke, Sarah, was that I wanted Janine to hook me up with... <laughs> I'm scared. I'm so scared right now. 
<laughs> okay. Oh my god. <laughs> That's an after after. You know what? Never mind. Uh, yeah, this will be recorded. After, after show. We'll talk Can we after. talk about Instacart though? Like why are you we didn't talk yeah. about you, but why are you? So, yeah, Instacart I need hater? you to not hate on, you know, those of us. That you know why you an Instacart hater? Cause cause that's that shows your age. Because you ain't never <laughs> had to go to grocery store with small children. That's you why said, you hate Instacart. You ain't I, never had I to go to the grocery I, store with small listen, children. I delivered for Instacart. I pulled up. That's I got the Hey, a card in my wallet right now. Word Every once in a while, I'm out, I'm not doing anything. I turn it on. I go do a few deliveries. I pull up to these to these it's suburban so areas. But why are like, you mad? Like, like why are you mad at this? Nah, you listen, was, you was clowning Instacart in the, in the in the. I wasn't. Like, I wasn't clowning it. <laughs> let me let me say what it is. It was hate. What it is was jealousy that I'm not at a place in my life where I can spend. <laughs> The money can. have my things delivered to me but you can, can. janine broke it down for you and it's perfect and that is why i started because we didn't have before we had instacart we had the curbside pickup and mm -hmm. when my kids were like two and four i started doing curbside pickup because if you ain't never been to the grocery store with a two and a four year old Bruh. it ain't nothing nice about that experience so i was like no nah, i'm gonna go ahead on and i'm gonna <laughs> order my shoes online i'm gonna pull up pick them up and janine broke it down perfectly the money that i spend in delivery fee or convenience fee for the curbside pickup i would have wasted with them kids begging me you've met my children for they so stuck in the cart extra right, for extra, an extra box of cheeses extra box of cheeses Ooh, extra yeah, fruit yeah. snacks like i'm a blow that six seven dollars whatever it is that i'm paying in the fee <laughs> for them to bring my bags out to my car and let me shout out lowe's foods where i used to do my pull-ups at because the lady used to call me and tell me when the produce didn't look fresh she's like you know what the produce that ain't part. good today and i'm like really well we gonna skip that go ahead and take that off the list and the best thing ever was when she called me up and she said, we don't have the princess fruit snacks. Is Dora fruit snacks okay? That I part. got my whole life that day. Like, dude, like that level of service. Shout out to Lowe's. Uh, Shout out to Lowe's. And it was worth the $6 <laughs> fee that I paid for her to make that phone call to me about princess fruit snacks. I then did not. I was like, oh, go ahead and supplement. It's fine. We're going to switch them out. I got the fruit snacks. They pull it out to my car. They had a little swipe, swipe. I ain't even got it. You know, they just swipe the right car side, print my receipt. I gave you that. I gave you I, that. I'm out. So I the money that you will waste. Stripes. I have yeah, the money you will waste. It's worth it. It's worth it. I I'm, not gonna, I'm not going to lie. At that point, <laughs> if I had little kids, I'm not going to lie. I'm not getting out the car. I mean, I've been tempted to use the uh, the curbside now because you know walmart and kroger they do it free yeah so i'm like you know but it's uh, still it is it is i eat out enough that's why i was saying i can't hate for real because i eat out all the time because i don't really like to spend time cooking and i don't have to right now so even you know, more reason why you're looking for the cougar right even more huh more reason why you're looking for the cougar no the no i'm not looking anymore okay, at that time cougar. at okay. that time in my life at that time in my life. Because your cougars ain't cooking. Your cougars is like <laughs> close to my age. Your cougars ain't cooking. Like listen, cougars for, listen, for you is like listen. my I don't age even cougars. attract people that don't like to cook. That's a whole other discussion. You got a whole vibe. It's, it's yeah. a, if I'm going to date you, you that yeah. a first, that's a first date question. How do you feel oh. about cooking? That tells me if we're oh. friends or not. Yeah, we, that's I don't, a I, mean, I, don't, I, I know I don't, coming up short. Ah, no, 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 no. Here's the thing. I don't like to cook. I legitimately don't like cooking. I will wash dishes after you cook. I just don't want to cook. So I am like, listen, if roots. you're about this cook life, I will scrub these pots. <clears throat> we in there. It was to the point in grad school at one point, I would like hit up my friends and be like, if you will cook an extra plate or meal prep an extra meal, I will chip in on the grocery bill. You know, people were so serious about not cooking for a dude, they would be like, no. I was like, where did they do this at? Because I did an undergrad all the time and was winning. Lived my best life. But, uh, uh, you know, it happens. Mm -mm. The grad school women, they got, they got studying. They got other things to do. To do. They on the and then they graduated and got mad that they were alone. 
I was oh, going, no. Hey, oh, no, we're not doing that. No. If you weren't out here serving popcorn and apples to, to your boy when he was sliding not through popcorn for a apples. <laughs> <laughs> I, I went over to this girl's apples. house. I'm done. I quit. I quit. I went over to this girl's <laughs> house, and I was like, "Yo, what?" She was like, "I'm about to eat dinner. Do you want something?" And I was like, "What are you making?" She pulled up with the microwave, popped a bag of popcorn, walked, <laughs> dumped it in the bowl, came over with a red apple, and was like, "This is dinner." I thought that was the snack. Oh I thought that was the snack to energize her. No. Because she was going to throw down after. Stop. I'm so Stop. dumb I can't. right now. I can't. And I was I like, can't. oh, this is not going to work out. We can't do this. <laughs> oh. uh -uh. Wow. And I was like, I was like, well, you know, if you're about to cook, I'll hop in the kitchen and, and, you know, scrub up these pots and pans. When you're done, you shouldn't have to, like, clean also. She was like, oh, no, this is it. This is what I'm eating. And I'm going to study more. And I'm going to go to sleep. And um, I was like, how are you going to study when you're hungry? I don't understand how that works. Apples are filling. I don't know. <laughs> fiber, yo, the fiber. Apples are filling. <laughs> this is a, a singular apple. You see, you I might even mess with you. Got two, three apples. One. Mm -mm. But oh, did you did, Paul, did you eat Paul it? Was is it West good... Indian. Well, yeah, she was from I'm... Georgia. I was caught off guard. So I was mm -hmm. from Atlanta. What's happening? I don't mm -hmm. know. I'm a Never cooker. Mind. I love cooking, but I'm 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 part of the last of a dying breed. I, I have to say. So Listen. yeah, I I don't enjoy cooking. I'm good. It's one of those things <clears> that I'm good at that I don't enjoy doing, but. I can put, you know, I can assemble meal, but I'm not a person who would, like, I know people who, I was talking to my best friend, like, she's a fantastic cook, and we go to restaurants, and she will eat, and then I watch her, like, pick stuff apart with her fork, and, you know, savor it to try to figure out what it is, so she can go home and replicate it. I'm like, can I get a doggy bag? Like, I'm not that, like, yeah, I you know, see you, I think you do it, like, oh, I can replicate this. I'm not replicating nothing. I'll be back though. I'll be back yeah, to order. Back. <laughs> I, will, I will shout them out on Instagram. Exactly. Like a picture of this plate and hit them with the hashtag. But uh um, but yeah, I'm not disassembling no meals trying to figure out the flavor profile. I'm not built that way. Can can I follow a recipe? Yes. Can I, you know, can I put food on the table? Yes. Is this something I have enjoyed to do? Never. My mom said that. She's like, you know, I'm not gonna send you out into the world not knowing how to put a meal together but no it was it was begrudging every single time yeah. no my mom made sure my mom's whole thing was you're not gonna go and find you're not gonna go and make some woman have to cook for you every day and she don't I feel good right. and so mom. that was her biggest thing because my dad didn't like to cook either um not for real and uh, so I can cook don't like to do it so if possible I would prefer to hit those dishes um or do something else clean the bathroom whatever just not cook well you're flexible and that's yeah yeah thing. you know i'm not i'm not chauvinistic i just genuinely don't enjoy the task <laughs> or i like oh you know you cook i'm gonna take you out the next time or something you know we balance it out balance it out ladies hop Ooh. on it Get on it, Listen. girls. Get on it. So, we've got a minute and 20 seconds left. Anything you guys okay. want to share about what you're into, what you got coming up, what you're doing? Black Vlogs Matter. I see you rocking your shirt today. Yeah. Black Vlogs Matter. Yeah, I've been yeah. liking, I've been trying to like and, and uh, support as much as possible. I need to share, though. I just haven't been active on sharing this week. I need to. It's lit. I get it. It's lit. It's a, it is the, listen, week two. Make America Separate Again Woo! has got some people in their feelings in these streets. I it, lost some followers yeah. on Twitter. It's all I'm not, I, I'm I'm not, I, I, I can't afford that kind of. Yeah. I can't yeah. afford that yet in my business. I need to grow a little more. I'm still young in the game. Give me two, it's, three years. It's real in the streets. <laughs> all right. So, yeah, 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 less than a minute, guys. I guess what, you got, uh, what you got going? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm working on a coding thing using MIT's App Inventor for kids who are in fifth to eighth grade. And wow. uh, basically, they get to create an Android app, and I'm, it's like an online video course I'm doing. And so, yeah, you know, it's out. 
for pre-sale stuff. I'm trying to launch it in April. So, so you can check awesome. that out. Well, you guys are awesome.